Hey, Vinyl Community. Hey, the watchers out in YouTube land. Uh, it's Mazzy here. This is one of those combo videos. Uh, Record Store Day, second drops August, uh, excuse me, September 2020. BCLT, some uh, uh, gifts people have sent me. And lastly, uh, new releases, new reissues that have come in over the last month or so. Last few weeks or so, and there's a big little pile here. I'll try to get to them quickly. Um, so there'll be like you know, three basic segments. In the background, if you can slightly hear it in the background, some people think my music's too loud. I play music loud. I try to keep it down here. I'm in a whole Philip Glass mood, but this is Paolo Squatsi, uh, the sequel to Koyana Squatsi, which is an amazing film, Life Out of Balance, uh, which you have to see. It's sort of time-lapse photography, and it's very uh, uh, based on the uh, Indian words, life out of balance and sort of uh, synergies with uh, modern versus traditional versus uh, back to the earth. Very appropriate right now with all the climate change, uh, things going on, the fires. I have friends, I have three friends now that lost their homes uh, in California this past time. And it's, it's just a, a, a shit show out there in the world. Enough of that. Some people don't like my politics, even though to me climate change is not a political issue or should not be. Science should have nothing to do with politics. Science is real. So here we go. Uh, VSL, VCLT uh, is Vinyl Community Love Train, things people have sent me um, in no particular order. Three different people. I got um, some amazing records from Room Granophone, uh, which I've been buying uh, records from his label. Real gramophone Norwegian label uh, that has a lot of minimal avant-garde, jazz, ethereal uh, music. I've showed some sh uh, a, a book of their 20th anniversary of the artwork they've done. And uh, three packages here. There's actually my new release. There's one that I bought um, separately that I'll show a little later. But Rune Gramophone does these amazing packages and they've done a uh, special edition CD and vinyl sets when they've reached sort of anniversaries for them. Their, their 50th anniversary, now not 50 years, but after their 50th release and after their 100th release and after their 150th release. And I'm not quite sure I'm going in order here, so um, I don't think it really matters, but this is an amazing collection. Um, this is a CD and art book that shows uh, some of their covers and artwork. And of course I should have this off of my, off the tip of my tongue now. Um, but what this is, this is, um, looks like it's two CDs up front here of artists like um, Susanna and the Magical Orchestra. Now, Susanna and the Mag Magical Orchestra, I just realized, I did not realize they were uh, an artist uh, in the 2000s, uh, early 2000s, mid-2000s on Moon Gramophone. I got into them, kind of a pop fluke. It's almost an ethereal pop version, cover version they did of Level Terrace Apart. And I'm not sure if I can include that um, at the end. If I can, at the very tail end, I'll put a, 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 a CD needle drop, so a CD drop. Uh, closing out this video with that music. Just a really kind of moody female vocal of uh, the great uh, song, uh, Love Will Tear Us Apart by Joy Division. This is an amazing box of 10 inch, uh, 10 inch records. And this one is called the 50, this, this celebrates the 50th release. This is what I was talking about. Look at these cover. Look at these covers and illustrations. Again, these are good samplers, and, but they really flow well. So, again, you get in a certain mood. This stuff is just just stunningly beautiful. So, thank you, um, Rune. Again, highly recommended. Ten inches. Um, Next, I got this Grateful Dog, and this is from Glenn Kellaway from Canada. Uh, he and I are both uh, Grateful Dead fans and fans of Jerry Garcia and David Grisman. I was fortunate enough to see Jerry and uh, David Grisman and all forms of them and in, in and old and in the way 
and the acoustic uh, bluegrassy rootsy side of Jerry Garcia in San Francisco maybe at 10 times or so throughout the 70s mostly uh, through different clubs in Berkeley and San Francisco um, and love love uh, this this is great this is an overview sort of a, a, a documentary that shows various live performances and rare uh, film uh, footage put together but thank you Glenn uh, from my uh, friend up in the north, Glenn Kellaway, calling you from the downstairs, the back room, the basement, in the basement, that is. Now this, this is out of the blue. This is someone who um, doesn't do videos. Someone named Colin O, I don't want to say your last name, but Colin O in um, the UK, and he wrote me this beautiful letter. Now, he had seen a video of mine, and I should grab that, uh, the CDs. And um, anyway, this is Sheila Chandra H2. This is a record, for, I believe from the 80s. In 1984, this could have been in my 1984 video. I'm doing this series of uh, uh, Memories of a Vinyl Junkie and I just posted 1984. So this could have been in there. I didn't know about her until, what, maybe 15 years ago or so, 20 years ago. Uh, she did two records on Peter Gabriel, three records on CDs, on Peter Gabriel's Real World. She is a, a UK, London-born Indian artist, amazing vocalist. She was also an actor in the UK. And she's got this amazing voice and her, her it's very kind of pop, Indian, uh, ambient, very soulful, but in a beautiful way. After this, and this, I put this record on, and I, it's been here for a couple weeks, and I finally put it on the other day, and I played it twice in a row. It's a gorgeous record. And he wrote this nice note. After seeing you show some Sheila Chandra CDs during one of your many VC videos, I remember that I had the enclosed. It had sat around doing nothing but taking up space for many years. I think it deserves a new home, hence this package. You probably already have it. If you do, please pass it along. I don't have it. I've never heard it. But I was blown away by this record. I mean, this is gorgeous stuff. I, I love this. I don't want to get everything else. I wish those other two records, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not stopping this. Yeah, I guess I should stop it. You didn't want to see me walk away for five minutes. These are the two CDs I have on Real World Music, both of them. She started doing this vocal pattern, literally with like clicks and noises, amazing music. Um, India and England. I love how uh, Peter Gabriel's label, they show the continents where the artists are from, from and the different colors. So it's India and uh, England there. there. Uh, this is Moonsung, a real world retrospective. So maybe this is a collection. This is a compilation of some of the best of her work for real world. Okay, I forgot. This is a comp. So I, I'm missing one actually. And this is um, Weaving My Ancestors' Voices. To me, these are extremely beautiful records. So if you're liking something a little out there, and it's not challenging, it's not like it's really far out stuff, but um, I wanna thank Colin uh, for sending me this. Then he's make some suggestions of other um, artists from different places. Um, he, enclosed, he enclosed some flyers from David Sylvian because I did a David Sylvian video. So anyway, Colin, thank you very much. This is really welcome, and I've, I've, I've played it four or five times now, two to begin with, and it's, it's just, it's actually in heavy rotation on the Mazzy turntable. Thank you. Okay, um, now let's go into Record Store Day. Um, as I said before, I did not go out August or September record store day. I did everything online. I did everything um, online. And I didn't, and I, except for one record that is not here in this video, the Yardbirds, a Roger the Engineer, I paid pretty much all, I paid all at a store, not an eBay, not a Discogs, store directly that had it for the regular price. Uh, if you know 10 a.m. Pacific time, the time of record store day drops, they list things. So it's like, really getting out there and rushing around on your computer, like buying tickets, um, waiting in line for tickets. 
but I got pretty much everything you wanted. I didn't want a lot, although there were probably about six, seven records that I was interested in that I got. So um, I'm gonna showcase those right now. And let me start out with one store. There was one store, um, I, I, I think I ordered from um, In Grooves in Phoenix that is does these great videos and always have a lot, but you gotta jump on his site literally right away at 10 a.m. Pacific time if you wanna get things, because within 10 minutes, everything's gone. Uh, Plaid Room Records also, um, local to me, um, High Voltage Records, which is in um, Tacoma, Washington. They're always a great uh, source. There's several others that I kind of hit and miss and search and go for the, you know, the hunt. I read Hoffman forums and people are suggesting, oh, there's a copy of this here and you got to jump on it. You got to act. But just lately, I used to be really good with Record Store Day, getting up early and doing it. I'm just not in the mood right now. Um, and I get it and I'm a fan of Record Store Day. But one of the stores in Grooves had extra copies of this box set. This is from the last one and I missed out on it. Uh, four records, I believe. Philip Glass, The Essential, it's music on vinyl, and it's extremely good. Uh, quiet pressing. I kind of thought uh, when I missed it that it didn't matter because I have a lot of Philip Glass on CD and the nature of, of that music, you like these uh, long CD things that go on for an hour, hour and 20 minutes. Uh, and breaking up the mood on, on a vinyl copy is different. But I tell you, this morning I played three records in a row and it just is stunning. This just arrived uh, yesterday and already I played it. And it's a great, uh, it's sort of a comp overview, not of his entire career, but uh, several things like uh, Liquid Days, which is a sort of a crossover semi-pop record for him, but has Linda Ronstadt and Paul Simon and David Byrne and Laurie Anderson, but is really gorgeous with these magnificent vocal things. A lot of his other stuff is um, is instrumental. So uh, the repetitive music of Philip Glass, uh, ambient classical 20th century, a lot of soundtracks he's done. Uh, but I love Philip Glass, so I'm really happy for that. I haven't listened to this yet. The 1969 album, this is third man uh, records version of Screaming Jay Hawkins. When he's trying to get a little more serious, this is because is in your mind. So what a beautiful artwork, gorgeous cover on this. Screaming Jay Hawkins, um, you should all know him in the late 50s, his great, great, one of the first singles John Lennon ever got, I Put a Spell on You by Screaming Jay Hawkins. So I'm looking forward to uh, checking this out. This just arrived yesterday as well. This record I missed out, it originally came out, what, two or three years ago on Record Store Day on the Renaissance label. Uh, sounds amazing. It's from a digital file, but you wouldn't know it. It sounds great from a 1968 German studio recording uh, with the wonderful trio of Eddie Gomez and Jack DeJeanette. And um, it's very minimal, a lot of melodies, a lot of the songbook type things like My Foley Valentine, These Foolish Things in a Sentimental Mood. So a lot of these uh, familiar melodies you will know if you know uh, the songbooks. Uh, Love this record. What kind of fool am I? Really intimate, really well recorded. Now, this came out two years ago. I missed it. It's been going for a couple hundred bucks uh, on the uh, Discogs and eBay since. And Renaissance reissued that. I think, though, the one from two years ago was uh, mastered by Bernie Grudman, and I heard it's great. This is a new mastering by Kevin Gray, and it's stupendous. Uh, th there are 6,000 press, so that seems like a lot for a jazz record, but I know it's sold out but i highly recommend it. it's two lps and um it it just sounds great again this is i have number uh 4076 out of 6000 that's a lot for a jazz record as i said but it's really well sounding um almond brothers band i mainly got this because of the san francisco connection 1971 fillmore west i did not attend the show of course, I'm a big fan of the uh, Fillmore East concerts. Now, those Fillmore East concerts are recorded better. They were, I think, recorded for an album. My guess is, and I haven't read the liner notes, these are from board tape. It sounds really good. It does not um, sound better than the Fillmore shows. So if you're looking for that, I'd say if you're getting a live Almond Brothers record and you have none, go for Eat a Peach or the Fillmore concerts. Those are stunningly amazing albums. I'd even try to find the uh, expanded four disc 
think it's four LPs box set of the Fillmore uh, East shows, because that is an amazing thing. But this is great. I mean, it has all the songs you'd expect. Statesboro Burl, Statesboro Blues, In Memory of Elizabeth Reed, Midnight Rider, Whipping Post. Again, Fillmore West, San Francisco, Bill Graham, uh, club on Market Street at South Venice. Uh, but I need it for that. But it, it is a good record. So some of these records you, you want for the performance and if everything's not going to be audiophile, but who friggin' cares when it's great music? Put that on a blast and it's great. But again, if you're looking for that Fillmore East sound, not quite there. Uh, this is interesting. Disappointment for some. I think it's really interesting. This is a stripped a strip version of Soft Parade, but it's only, um, well, it's, what is it? Uh, it's, actually, it's got eight cuts, but it's got the doors only mix and different mixes. What's interesting about that, some people don't like the original versions of um, Touch Me and the hits from this record, or Tell All the People, I guess, with all the horns and rage. To me, that's the Jim Morrison. It's almost like he's the crooner. Tell all the people that you see, uh, follow me, follow me down. If you watch the version, is it not Ed Sullivan, but the TV version with that horn second is so hysterical. I like that, maybe because we're just so used to it. This is a fun alternative. It's got this, you know, silly plastic cover. It could have been a real cover. I think I, you're supposed to take it out of these sleeves now because uh, this will ruin it. So I'll put a MoFi sleeve on this. Um, I like this. Again, it's it's not, uh, if you're a Doors fan, it's a must have. I'm not sure if these were some on the extended CD uh, set. I don't have that, but um, it's a fun, it's not a necessary uh, record that you all need if you're just a mild Doors fan. But um, it's it, Record Store Day is the perfect time for that. Just don't overpay for it. Now, one of my, one of my favorites uh, is this Billie Eilish, and this is the one recorded live at uh, Third Man Records, sort of a direct-to-disc. It's, it's just him, uh, excuse me, her and her um, and her brother Phineas, and to me, her record is one of the best of uh, the year. Incredible record. Of, was it last year? This year? I guess last year. This is cool, really cool. So I don't care what you you wombats say about Billie Eilish. She's she's the real deal. And I love it, sounds amazing. Yeah, there's some exuberance of the audience in there, but why not, right? I mean, can you imagine that, seeing in that little intimate uh, type of setting, recording this? I think it's uh, I think it's one of the better of the releases. And lastly, for this section, before I get into new releases, I'm showing this. Now, the only reason I'm showing this, there was a uh, John Prine box set that came out on the first Record Today drop. I did not get it because I have thir three of the original uh, Atlantic records, so I don't I don't feel I needed it. But I don't have this. Um, this is one John Prine album. I think it's his fourth he did for Atlantic Records, and I just never got it. Great record, I know the record, but I never picked it up on um, on vinyl. So those of you who were looking and missed out on that John Prine box, right now you can get all the four Atlantic records separately, so you don't have to pay, you know pay overpriced for the big box. So check this out, produced by Steve Cropper. Um, and it's got, you know, Steve Goodman is on it. Um, what can I say? Uh, Donald Duck Dunn was recorded in Memphis. Yeah, recorded at Arden Studios, Memphis, Tennessee, and Larrabee Studios in Los Angeles. Uh, so everybody now loves, rightly so, John Prine great record. So um, there's going to be uh, the last segment of sort of new records, mostly reissues, a couple of new things have come in in the last few weeks. And I'll be back after this little something. fun. Now here's the here's the new record part. And there's a lot of reissues. This has been a huge year of reissues. And uh, since a lot of us have been uh, hunkered down in our homes during this pandemic, uh, 
it's been fun to revisit some records, our own records that we've had, and, and some, it's a, really a golden age for reissues in some ways. Uh, obviously, uh, there's a lot of stuff repackaged that's repackaged fast and quick and cheap and aren't that great as originals, but um, there's something to be said, and I can not going to get into the whole thing here about mastering and you know what's better, originals or uh, reissues. It just really depends on the specific album, the source material, the uh, mastering, uh, packaging, and everything else. So it's not like originals are always better or reissues are always better. I'm going to start with something. Uh, actually, I'm going to start with the CD box because this is an important box. Um, I have shown on my channel, <clears throat> excuse me, an amazing box that came out last year. Uh, eight CD box set that came out only in the UK. Uh, it was imported here but there's certain things with licensing going on all, all of these sets, which is unfortunate that we can't just put everything out in the world and we can't all have access to things from our continent or our country. So you might have to pay more for imports if you can't even get it. Um, and these aren't really fringe artists. Last year was the this box I was talking about was the Bobby Gentry box set, uh, which to me was stupendous. It really kind of shined a different light on Bobby Gentry, her music, um, and everything else. But what came out um, just was in the last uh, month is a box set compiled by Andrew Batt uh, out of the UK. And the box set is called Richard and Linda Thompson, Hard Luck Stories, 1972 to 1982. If you don't know uh, Richard and Linda, Richard Thompson was in um, uh, Fairport Convention great guitar player. Uh, he made some amazing solo albums. I think the highlight of their career is the Shootout, the Lights album that was happening during their sort of explosive, massive <laughs> split up. I won't get into that. Now, just a little uh, asterisk before I jump into this a little bit. This only came out in the UK. So if you, yeah, I had to get this from Universal in the United Kingdom. I think people got it from Amazon in the UK, so a few indie stores, and it's really a little hard to get now, but there were issues, and I'll tell you what happened. Reading the forums and a lot of other places, a lot of copies here, some of the CDs would not read on most, on many CD players, and people had trouble ripping them to their computers. Now, I know this is the vinyl community, but I definitely talk about <laughs> CDs quite a bit. So uh, after about 10 days and um, back and forth with even Andrew, uh, the producer on this, on the forums and other areas, Universal announced they're gonna do a replacement. So if you have a copy of this, there's an email address. You can find it on the Hoffman forums. You can go to the, I think the Universal Music Twitter site and see the link and send proof of purchase. And right away you get a download link so you can get the music right away. And then once, who knows when, a few weeks or a couple months when they repress the CDs, you'll get replacements. Uh, I have an OPPO 205 CD player and so far half the discs have tracked uh, well on mine. I have not tried to load them in. Uh, my buddy in uh, Jersey had a couple of issues burning. So, but that's a technical thing. So if you have that, uh, be aware of that. If you want this, jump on it now. These are the albums that are in here, and it's it's there's outtakes, there's rare, there's live things, and it's amazing. Again, it comes with a beautiful book of uh, Richard and Linda and their work, uh, all their uh, wonderful kind of folk and folk rock albums. Amazing, amazing. Again, Shoot Out the light, uh, Lights is my favorite, but um, it has uh, all their great records, First Light, Bonus Tracks, Sunny Vista, Pour Down Like Silver, Hokey Pokey, I Want to See the Bright Lights Tonight. Uh, anyway, an amazing set, highly recommended. Uh, I've been through now five of the eight CDs and it's really beautiful. After the, about the first three or four older tracks, the um, mastering is stunning. These, uh, This music has not sound better. There is no vinyl equivalent to this. And the vinyl versions that are coming out right now of the Richard and Linda albums that are on C, uh, on uh, vinyl are not mastered by Andy Andrew. So I don't know the quality of those. I have some of them on uh, as reissues. So anyway, anyway uh, highly recommended if you like that music, but just uh, a warning, 
about that. But if you want it, I'd grab it as soon as possible and then deal with Universal to get replacement discs. Now, I think one of the top albums issues, and not a reissue, but is this Monk album. Uh, I'm gonna show some uh, recent Tone Poets and everyone's been on this bandwagon of um, Music Matters Jazz and Tone Poet and BN80 archival, but audiophile jazz records. This is not that. However, to me, this is one of the best issues in jazz in 2020. This is from a tape um, from 1968 recorded at Palo Alto High School, <clears throat> which is south of San Francisco, right near Stanford University. A 16-year-old uh, student, Danny Shearer, uh, produced a show of uh, Monk and his uh, trio at the high school, and the janitor taped it, and these tapes have been hidden, or just been, people didn't realize they were around for 50 years until recently. <clears throat> it came out on the Impulse label. Now, Danny Shearer, excuse me here, <clears throat> Danny Shearer went on to work, um, I met him a couple times, he went on to work for Bill Graham in San Francisco, uh, Bill Graham Productions, and <clears throat> worked on a lot of the shows. One moment, please. So this is one of those examples of a record that it's about the performance. Now, it's not bootleg quality, it's better. It's a good quality record, but it's just simply not an audio file. But this is the record, the jazz record, I've been listening to most <clears throat> in the last two weeks. Beautiful packaging on Impulse. It was delayed somewhat because there were some rights issues. I think it was going to be on Blue Note. Then it got shifted. It comes out with a poster of the um, Pally High Auditorium at um, the high school. I used to go on this campus a little bit because my grandmother and grandfather lived down in Palo Alto when I was growing up as a kid. So, uh, Thelonious Monk. It comes with a beautiful little book of the show talking about the history of the recordings. Again, a beautiful matte cover finish. And it has this great little high school brochure. This is a replica of the um, performance when it came out. So you can see advertisements of the local music stores and um, jewelry stores that would put their business card in to advertise for their brochure to sponsor the event. Tickets were $2. Uh, anyway. An amazing record, highly recommended. If you're a, if you're a music fan, a jazz fan, this is great. Don't expect high fidelity, but it's really good quality. So, um, I think this is an amazing, uh, amazing record, and I think this is could be the best issue. Now, it's, it's not a reissue, so I can't say the best reissue, but the best archival release of 2020. I would put my money on this. However, there are other things which, when we do my year end you'll see. Now, this is strange because this is a um, Gard Nielsen Supersonic Orchestra. And is this Norwegian? Norwegian or... Um, okay, here's the problem I have with this. First of all, it's really interesting. Jazzy, modern jazz. I saw this presented on the vinyl community, and I don't remember who, who presented it. It seems like the kind of music that would either be uh, Julius Jabbar, but I don't think it was him, Motorik 247, um, Local Bandography Dave, but I'm not sure. So let me know if you turn me on to this. And I heard a clip of it and I loved it and I ordered it. I haven't played it yet because I've been getting so much stuff. But look at that beautiful sort of psychedelic cover of jazz. It's a, a double record set and it's got all these these um, artists on here that I can't even pronounce. And it's, it came out, I think it's, it's brand new. Anyway, reach out to me and uh, maybe I'll get, uh, talk about it more later on. Now, obviously now they're continuing with the, um, the series of uh, Tone Poets and I picked up some recent issues. Uh, this is really a great record. Now this is from 1985, live concert. This is volume one of Joe Henderson, State of the Tenor at the Village Vanguard. Um, this is not a gatefold, it's single. This was a digital recording from the time, but it, again, Kevin Gray, Kevin Gray uh, mastered it and it sounds awesome. Last year they put out volume two, so they did them in reverse, but this is a wonderful album. Joe Henderson's an amazing uh, sax player and 
He's accessible. Sometimes he gets a little out there, and that's an amazing, amazing recording. Um, then there is um, Tone Poet's Horse Silver Quintet Blue Note from 1958 recording. Again, another wonderful uh, album. Blue Note is doing a, a series and doing about three a month. So they got uh, backed up because of the uh, close downs of RTI, the pressing plant during the um, pandemic, which is still going on. Uh, prayer meeting, Jimmy Smith. And of course, it's got Stanley Turrentine, Donald Bailey and Quentin Warren on, on, on guitar. So this is, this is a, a, a cool, cool soul jazz record. And the other one of this series that came out is Herbie Hancock, My Point of View. I mean, Herbie Hancock records are very popular. Of course, this has um, the in Grant Green on guitar. So you get, if you like Grant Green, this is a Herbie Hancock to get. Tony Williams on drums, Chuck Israel on bass, Hank Mobley on tenor sax, and Gretchen Moncour the third on trombone, and Donald Byrd on trumpet. So this is a large, one of the larger groups for a Blue Note session. But again, a stupendous, stupendous, uh, gorgeous record, record. Okay, getting into something a little more on the uh, out there side. Oh, and I have a couple things that I should have showed uh, before, but anyway. Um, Hedvig Molstadt. Um, Hedvig is a guitar player, and this is sort of jazzy fusion, a little out there. I haven't listened to this very much, but this is the other um, room gramophone record that just came out that um, I ordered and I heard a couple clips of it and I've seen it shown around. I know Dave Local Bandography has shown it uh, and I it took me a while to get this. Now, here's a tip that I should have said before and I should have followed my own advice. When you're opening up a package, if you're using a box knife, be careful. Come on. That's why I like when there's a cardboard stiffener on top of the record. And I know this and I've done it before and I, it totally fucked up. So. I totally ruined uh, the cover of this amazing record. Look at that kind of, almost like psychedelic artwork. Beautiful label too. So um, I don't have much more to say about this, but Room Gramophone, uh, as, as you saw at the beginning of my uh, video, a lot of their stuff is um, sometime dirgy, sometime uh, uh, avant-garde, jazz, minimal, out there, fusion, a lot of different sources. Now, this is, I forgot to show in the beginning of the video. When I got the Rune gramophone package, uh, this is a uh, double vinyl record that came out. This celebrates release number 100. So this is a comp, and it has a lot of different artists, and this um, came out in 2010. So. 20 Centuries of Stony Sleep. Another Room gramophone comp celebrating an anniversary. I, Room, you like these anniversaries, don't you? I think we all should have uh, anniversaries celebrating our own accomplishments and uh, art forms. And this is beautiful. Again, another beautiful package. I love how simple this cover is. And then it opens up this great graphic, black and white graphic. Uh, again, a comp of a lot of the uh, work at the time with um, A-Log, the low frequency in stereo, Aux Club, Ultra Lead, Selena and Brian. I gotta stop pronouncing, trying to pronounce any of their names because um, I can never do it. A couple of new mixes of Death Prod. Anyway. 350 copies, oh no, 350 gram extra thick gatefold sleeve. Never mind. I'm, I'm screwing this up. I should research this a little more. 20th Centuries of Stony Sleep, Room Gramophone. Again, uh, a current favorite label of mine and some really interesting things. Um, before I close out, there's a couple more things and now I'm going to go um, to the naked part of my video. So you ready? Two years ago, a record came out um, that I really enjoyed. It's just a fun record in a band. I think they started out in North Carolina. They were pop, psychedelic, very 60s, and that was the nude party. This came out two years ago, and um, 
I got into the record about a year ago and I really, really like them. Fun group, really interesting uh, on New West Records. Um, I think they started about six, seven years ago or eight years ago, the band. I don't know much of their history. Um, maybe some of you North Carolinians, Carolin Car Carolinians, Carolinians can answer that. But I just got in and I haven't listened to it yet. I got directly from the label a signed copy of the Nude Party's new 2020 collection, 2020 album. And it's called The Nude Party Midnight Manor, all signed. So I ordered directly from um, New West. And with that, let's see, do I have it here? Well, somewhere, they, I got a pack of uh, New Party rolling papers. So maybe you'll see them on the end, but uh, maybe not. So uh, that's, the, that's the naked part of this video. So if you're expecting something else, I'm, I'm sorry I disappointed you. Closing out with two bigger sets. I got this because uh, Steve Carlson showed it. I'm not a huge Metallica fan. I like some of their stuff. I saw them live once, and it's the kind of music I prefer live, and I wish I saw this show because um, since I left San Francisco seven years ago, there's been a lot of changes, and they just built and opened, uh, what, almost two years ago now, a year and a half ago, Chase Stadium, a huge, beautiful, state-of-the-art uh, indoor stadium for the Golden State Warriors basketball team and other concert events uh, on a stretch of 3rd Street in San Francisco by Mission Bay. And um, debuting that was the San Francisco Symphony. Uh, Michael Tilson Thomas is the main symphony head who just is left and just retiring from the symphony this year, uh, but with Metallica. And it's their um, S&M II. They did this again, I think 20 years ago, it was the original at Davies Hall, where the symphony usually performs. And they opened uh, Chase Center with this set. There's a video version, there's a huge box. This is the four LP version of the entire show. Gorgeous package um, with, with liner notes and books um, about it. Now, I should just mention just because the, uh, the conductor is um, Edwin Outwater, did most of the conducting. Um, but, um, and then of course, uh, Metallica. And then uh, Michael Tilson Thomas uh, was there for part of it. I mean, was there for the whole event, but came up and worked with them. And great photography by Anton Corbin. You probably know him, who started out shooting U2 on a lot of their records, covers, uh, those beautiful black and white photographs. Again, I like the concept of idea. A lot of times, you know, classical and rock and roll doesn't always mix, but um, this is what I've heard so far. Of this is really interesting, so we'll see. Lastly, I'm going to close out with Prince, um, Sign of the Times. This is the 4LP box set that has the uh, new mastering of the album, which, st which is stunning. Bernie Gredman did it, and I was disappointed on a few of the uh, Prince things. Uh, the Purple Rain 20th anniversary, or the 30th, 40th, <laughs> whatever it was, anniversary, I thought the sound sucked and it was really bad. I got compact disc of that and I had to return it, it was so bad. But now Prince, the stage is finally doing it right, doing good mastering and not compressed. Bernie Gredman did an amazing job on this. The four record set includes the actual album, and all the remix long singles, I mean, the extended uh, versions that were on 12 inch and B sides and things, and it's really good. There's also a multi disc set that I think it's seven or nine LPs. Now, I was so tempted and I decided not to go for the big box. I like one for big boxes. There's also a, a version, black or a peach version of the regular album. I don't really give a shit about color. So, um, and I didn't want the, just the regular album. I have an original, and this actually sounds better than the original. Uh, doesn't always happen that way. Incredible uh, set, nice book, has a download card, individual sleeves on the albums. Um, I did uh, watch a part of a video where um, John, six inch penis, pianist, 
out of the UK, John, there's a lot of great videos, uh, releases on soul and R&B and funk and jazz records. And um, he talked, I saw him on a, uh, a guest video he appeared on where he talked about the massive set. And, and this, is, this is where people tempt me again. It's not just these packages with outtakes and unfinished tracks. They're literally, literally like six records of unreleased, fully realized songs and jams. Prince has an amazing stockpile of uh, unreleased material. And I kind of want to get that. I keep thinking maybe I'll just get that on a compact disc because I would, would I listen to all the records? But if it sounds as good as this, that's tempting. And if any of you are ever interested in these big box sets, whether it's um, the Stooges or um, Tom Petty that's coming out, if you want the biggest boxes, and they're not for everybody, I get that, order them sooner than later because they, they disappear in an instant. And I do have the, uh, the big Petty box coming because I love wildflower, wild flowers, wildfires, wildflowers. <laughs> Um, so that's just a Mazzy uh, suggestion on that. But this is one of my favorite Prince albums. And it's, ironically, it's not even the upbeat songs on this I love the best. My favorite song on here is The Cross. Psychedelic, dirgy masterpiece in my mind. The Cross. So that's news records. We all love new records. Um, and they don't smell musty and staley and mildewy like old records. Love old records too. So... Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed before. Um, I'm gonna do a little self promo here. I've been doing this series of uh, memories of a um, vinyl junkie and I have done uh, 1970, 70, 19, no, 1972. Uh, Coming Down the Pike is 1966 and 1984 just came out. And then there's going to be a 1978. So I'm just going in different orders of years of my life, showcasing it of some memories of, when, of things I was going through personally. Good, bad, and ugly. Not really bad, but just adventures. And the music that really kind of bookmarks uh, that time in my life and all of our lives, depending on our ages and stuff. And, you know, you hear it around here a lot when people start getting personal about the music. We... You know, a lot of these songs, a lot of these records, a lot of these album covers trigger memories. And um, doing this whole vinyl community and these YouTube videos has triggered a shitload of memories for me uh, about music, about politics, about uh, growing up, about my life and the life of my friends and, and experiences and people around me. So I, I love it all. You know, it's kind of like John Lennon said, there are places I'll remember all my life, though some, some have changed, not forever and so on and so on. One of the most beautiful lyrics of John Lennon. Uh, and there should be a John Lennon uh, 80th uh, birthday video with David coming. But again, I don't expect people to be watching these videos in order, so who knows when you're watching this. Right now, it is October 3rd, 2020. Thank you for watching and Mazzy loves you.